Uh, hello, everyone. It's my honor for me to give the presentation of a paper at the web conference 2022. And the title of the paper is Element Guided Temple Graph Run Presentation Learning for Temple Size Prediction. I'm the first author of this paper from Beihang University. And in this presentation, I will introduce the work in the following five parts. Uh, first, let me introduce the background. As we know, temporal data are valuable in the reality, and we can divide the temporal data into three categories, including time series, temporal events, and temporal sites. Time series is the simplest form of temporal data, which is composed of a sequence of numerical values with time steps. And time series prediction aims to predict the next value of the sequence. If the value is further associated with the semantics, we can obtain the temporal events. And temporal events prediction is more complicated because we need to additionally handle the semantic information. And one step further, if multiple events happen at the same time and they form a site, we can obtain the temporal sites. And temporal sites is formalized as a sequence of sites, where each site is with a time step and it can include an actual number of elements. It's obvious that temporal size prediction is the most complicated. And in this paper, we aim to solve the problem of temporal of temper size prediction. In fact, temporal sites are pricey in practical scenarios. For example, we can treat a uh, customer's purchase behaviors as a temporal size, uh, where each site corresponds to a purchase at a supermarket and it uh, includes a number of products. And moreover, taking the pres prescriptions in hospitals and traveling in multiple places and uh, choosing courses at schools and could also be treated as temporal sites. And it's not all that temporal size prediction is of great importance and making accurate prediction of temporal sites can help people make better decisions. And temporal size prediction has caught the attention of some researchers in recent years. And we can divide the existing methods into two groups. Methods in the first group, first invite each site into a fixed fixed size vector and then convert the prediction of temporal sites into the prediction of temporal events. For example, the dream model uses the pooling operations uh, to invite each site into a vector. And uh, they imply an uh, RN structure to learn the dynamics in the sequence. And size to size gets the uh, set repetitions by the average pooling operation. And they use uh, an encoded code framework to predict the multi-period sites. However, the two-step uh, framework often leads to the information loss issue in the site embedded per size, and they will uh, obtain the unsatisfactory prediction performance. And to alleviate the information loss issue, methods in the second group designed the components to learn uh, elements inside. The DNTSP model, the DNTSP model first captures the intra-site relationships of elements by constructing the site level co-occurrence graphs. Then they learn the temporal dependencies and the shared patterns of elements based on the self extension mechanism and the gated updating mechanism. The DSNTSP introduces a dual sequential network to learn both the set level and the element level reputation of user sequence. And they also employ a co transformer structure to capture the temporal dependencies. However, previous methods only learn from each user's own sequence and the collaborative signals latent in different users are not explored. As shown in the figure, uh, then predicting the next period site for user U3, uh, exist methods only learn from U3's own sequence and tend to predict the elements that the user has interacted with before. If we consider the sequence of other users like user U1 and U2, we can observe that uh, element V3 often appears together with the V1 and V2, indicating their strong correlations. And uh, element V5 usually, usually appears after V3, and this re reflects their sequential orders. Therefore, the probabilities of V3 and V4 will become higher due to the collaborative signals, but the existing methods fail to leverage stuff used for information. And in this paper, we construct a temporal graph to connect the sequence of different users. And we design a model to learn the temporal graph to explicitly encode the collaborative, the collaborative signals. Now let's give the uh, formalization of the study problem. And given a sequence of sites, SI, that records the historical behaviors of user UI, the temporal size prediction aims to predict the next period size of UI according to the given sequence. 
previous methods only takes SI as the input, which is the uh, user's own sequence. And different from the existing methods, we design a new pipeline to encode the collaborated signals in different user sequences. And we take the sequence of all the users as, as the input. And here is our framework. Uh, the framework is consists of three components. The first component constructs a sample graph to connect the different uh, sequence the different sequences, and it turns the uh, time size prediction problem from sequence learning to time graph representation learning. And the second component learns element specific representations for each user. And the collaborative signals latent in the high order user element interactions are learned by aggregating the messages on multiple hops. And the third component captures the, captures the thematic and the periodic patterns in user sequential behaviors. And we have the following three contributions. Firstly, we explicitly capture the collaborative signals and we design a new message aggregation mechanism. And moreover, we comprehensively capture the sample information. And in the first, in the first component, we first contrast the sample graph to connect all the user sequence. The sample graph is a bipartite whose nodes are composed of both users and elements, and uh, the edges denotes the user element interactions with time information. Let's take the sequence of user U3 in the figure and then example. For user U3, we will add seven edges in the sample graph where each edge consists, consists of the source node, the target node, the absolute time and the relative time. And each edge denotes that the user has interacted with the elements. Uh, in his historical behaviors. And after establishing the edges for all the users, we will also add the reverse edges from the elements to users to make the sample graph undirected. And you may notice that the sample graph is bipartite and uh, it's straightforward to apply the existing graph neural networks for bipartite graph learning to solve our problem, such as the uh, NGCF or the live GCF. Mm, however, these methods can only provide a single vectorized reputation for each user. And the expressive ability of such a single vector is found to be insufficient for our sample size prediction problem. And to this end, we devise a new element-guided message regression mechanism to learn the element-specific reputation for each user. Uh, in particular, at each hop L, we will use each element as a query vector to aggregate the neighbors of user UI as uh, L's hop. And specifically, we first use a feature embedding layer to obtain the embeddings of users and elements. And then we perform the element guided message aggregation at each hop. And in particular, uh, for hop L, the reputation of user UI specific to the element VG is calculated by the weighted aggregation equation. It's, notice, it's worth no, noticing that unlike the existing graph neural networks with the attention me mechanism such as the GAD and the graph transformer, we compute the neighbor importance by using elements as a query vectors. For example, we use the uh, embedding of element of VG as a query vector and compute the dot product of VG's embedding with the embedding of neighbor O as a else hop. Then the importance is normalized by the softmax with liquid value as an activation function. And by utilizing all the elements as a query vectors to aggregate the neighbor information, the reputation of user UI as an else hop is obtained. And we also aggregate the messages on multiple hops to encode the collaborative signals. And the final repetition of UI is derived by the concatenation operation. We further design a sample information utilization component to capture both the semantic and the periodic pattern to reflect user sequential behaviors. Uh, and for each interaction with the absolute time and the relative time, we first extract its semantic sample feature and we use an encoder to encode the semantic pattern. The periodic sample feature is denoted by the time interval between the filter time and the current time. Then we encode it into a continuous vector following the sample encoding functions. 
we design the trainable cosine and sine functions to automatically learn the cycles of user sequential behaviors from the data. And finally, the temporal repetition of each interaction is obtained by concatenating the semantic features and the periodic features. Next, we incorporated the temporal encodings into the message aggregation process to make a model be a one of the temporal information. And we also use a hyperparameter lambda to control the importance of the temporal information. Finally, after we get the repetition of users on multiple hops, we compute the probabilities of each element appearing in the next period size of each user by the prediction layer. And we treat the task of temporal size prediction as a multi-label classification problem. Uh, we adopt the cross entropy loss as an objective function and we, op and we optimize the model by the back propagation. We conduct the experiment, experiment on four data sites. The first three data sites are obtained from the shopping scenarios. And the last one records the online questions of users. And for data partition, we use the last site, the second, the second last site, and the re remaining sites of each user for testing, validation, and training, respectively. And the three evaluation metrics, including the recall, NECG, and the PHR, are used. We compare or measure with three categories of baselines, including the statistical methods and the method designed for the recommender systems and the method designed, method designed for the time size prediction. We optimize all the methods by atom and use dropout to prevent overfitting. And grid search is also applied to find the best configuration of a model. The settings of a model is shown in the table. And we rank top K elements from the predicted probabilities. And the results on the four data sites show that a model is able to outperform the existing method with a significant, with a significant margin. And this is because a model can learn the element specific repetition of each user and encode the collaborative signals in high order user element interactions. More work or model can also capture the semantic and the periodic patterns in user sequential behaviors to further improve the performance. And we also show the performance of our method and baselines when k varies from one to uh, 40. From the results, we can observe that our model consistently outperforms the baselines in most cases without the influence of the predicted sizes of, of sites. Uh, we also investigate the effects of the collaborative signals by varying the number of hops that we aggregate the, uh, uh, that we perform the message aggregation. We find that uh, gradually increasing the number of hops can increase can improve the model performance. In particular, when the hop of num when the hop number is set properly, our model achieves consistent improvements than only aggregating neighbor information and a single hop. This shows the advantage of exploring collaborative signals of a model. We also conduct the ablation study to validate the effectiveness of the element guided message aggregation component and the temporal information utilization component. We observe that our model achieves the best performance when it uses both the models. And we finally provide an example to understand how the collaborative signals facilitate the prediction. We select the user, the sequences of three users, and the task is to predict the next period size of a user U179. And we mark the collaborative signals in the sequences with different colors. And we find that it's helpful to consider the sequences of the other two users when making the prediction. And in our model, the other two users will become the two hop neighbors of the target user in the time graph. And by aggregating the messages on multiple hops, our model successfully discovers the collaborative signals and predicts the new element V100 and uh, V104 that the target user has not interacted before in the top 10 results, but the baselines failed to do so. And this shows the advantage of model in learning collaborative signals. 
And thanks for listening. If you are interested, if you are interested in your work, please refer to a paper and uh, at the web conference for more details. And please feel free to ask if you have any question. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Lee. This was an amazing presentation. And thanks for sharing the data sets and the code. And as you can see, the GitHub link is there for everybody to go and pick up the data set and try to reproduce the results. So this is a, I mean, I'm gonna, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself uh, and speak up, or you can just kind of type in on the chat. We do have a couple of minutes for questions. So maybe what I can do is just start with one of the questions uh, around evaluation. So in the meantime, like feel free to think about questions and either just unmute yourself or type in on, on the chat. So Lee, one of the questions I had was like, when I'm evaluating sets, then one of the things which a model can try to do is just try to predict more elements, right? And then that has an unfair advantage that, I mean, if you predict, like if the set had three elements, but I'm making a prediction of four and five, uh, then you can game the recall metrics slightly. So is do you look at like some evaluation wherein you're kind of con conditioning based on the number of elements you're predicting, or are you also predicting how many elements should I be making a prediction for in the future set? Okay, um, that's a good that's a good question. And thanks. And I think the uh, in the current version of our work, we just use a recall NDCG and the PHR to evaluate our model without considering the number of the elements in the ground in the site, which is the ground truth. Um, I think uh, it's more reasonable to consider the actual number of elements in the in the ground truth site. Uh, and I think it, and I think that um, I have seen some papers to predict the number of elements in the site instead of predict the uh, actual elements in the site. And I think um, we can leave this for the future work. Yes. So maybe like a multitask model, which has which does that prediction together with this. Uh, yes, we can cite multiple objective uh, objectives to. And get a model to learn not only which elements should appear in the next period site and how uh, how many elements will appear in the next period site. Yes. Nice. Do we have any questions from the group? I do have like one very it's a very interesting topic to me personally because I use a lot of something similar in my my industry setting as well. So quick question is like do you have any insights on what is more important? Like is a sequential order across elements more important? or in a set, which elements are you co-occurring with more important? And is that a tunable parameter in your model or how do you decide or any insights on that? Thanks. I, I think the key, the core of time size prediction is to consider the uh, unique properties of sites and what, what, the, uh, what uh, the difference of our of our studied problem, the time size prediction with the uh, uh, traditional uh, recommendation systems is that I think uh, multiple elements happen in the same site and uh, the traditional method for recommender systems fail to consider the unique property of sites. And uh, the temporal dependencies of the sequential sites is also um, important, but I think the relationships of elements in the same site is uh, more important than than the sequential order, yes. Because uh, in the at the KDD two thousand and twenty two, we also have a paper to consider the sequential behaviors of the uh, elements inside. But in this paper shows um, better performance than our previous work, and I think that um, considering the relationships of sites, uh, the relationships of elements in the sites is also important. Yes. Amazing. This is this is perfect. Thanks so much. And thanks for mentioning the KDD 2022 paper as well. That's also, I mean, for folks who are interested, you can go and look at a uh, paper which is going to get presented in KDD in the coming months in August, I think. So this is amazing. Thanks so much, Lee, for joining us and for asking the questions. Okay, thanks a lot.